In this video, I will tell you everything we know so far about the upcoming NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4080 graphics card based on Ada Lovelace microarchitecture. I will cover its specs, gaming performance compared to the current generation, release date, and of course the price. Jumping ahead, I will say this. After watching this video, you will be tempted to reconsider buying an RTX 3090 or 3090 Ti after learning how easy RTX 4080 will outperform both of them while costing about two times less when it comes out later this year. But not as easy as building a website with Squarespace. You don't need any prior experience. I know that because I used Squarespace to build my first ever website using one of their amazing fully customizable templates to make the website look personal. Currently I use this website as a portfolio, but there is room to grow with features like online stores to sell physical or digital products, as well as powerful analytics that help you understand where the visits and sales are coming from to improve the website and build a better marketing strategy. Try it for free at squarespace.com and when you are ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash to save 10% off your first website or domain. The links are in the description below. Let's start with RTX 4080 specs. Nvidia will use AD103 GPU manufactured on a TSMC 4nm node. FYI, AMD plans on using a TSMC 5nm node for its upcoming RX 7000 series graphics cards. That is a small advantage for Team Green. But the manufacturing will cost more, so expect to pay a higher price for an RTX 4000 series graphics card compared to RTX 3000 series equivalents. The full AD103 chip has 10,752 CUDA cores and 64 MB of cache. That is the same number of CUDA cores as in RTX 3090 Ti. However, 3090 Ti comes with just 6 MB of cache. Having 64 MB is a huge improvement that will be reflected in the gaming performance. The next generation of Tensor and RT cores will significantly boost AI and ray tracing based tasks in games as well as professional apps. Nvidia plans to continue advancing ray tracing technology for years to come and have it as one of the main selling points in its products. RTX 4080 will most likely use a cut down version of AD103 GPU, so it will have slightly fewer CUDA cores. That is just the result of how chip manufacturing works. You cannot get 100% yields. On the bright side, RTX 4080 will have 16 GB of GDDR6X memory. That is plenty for gaming at 4K resolution in the coming years. I cannot confirm the TDP just yet, but it should be close to 350 watts. I am sure we will get an update on that in the coming weeks. Subscribe to hear about it. As for the release date, according to the latest leaks, Nvidia plans to reveal RTX 4090 in July. I expect to see RTX 4080 and 4070 revealed alongside it. So, potentially 4080 could hit the store shelves in the second half of this summer. The price is usually Nvidia's best kept secret, up until CEO Jensen Huang gets on a stage to reveal the products. But expect to see RTX 4080 priced between $750 and $900. Prices will certainly increase compared to the previous generation because chips got more expensive to produce. Now about the gaming performance. I prepared charts for gaming at 4K as well as 1440p resolution. But before that, here is a quick disclaimer. Thanks to the leaked RTX 4090 performance target, we can roughly work out what RTX 4080 performance will be like. I want to be very clear that what I am about to show you is a very rough estimation. But I wanted to see the bigger picture, so I have done the calculations and don't see a reason not to share it with you. In 4K gaming, RTX 4080 should be about 30-50% to better than RTX 3090, while costing about two times less. That is why you should think twice before investing in a 3090 or 3090 Ti right now. Cyberpunk 2077 is known for destroying the FPS on any GPU. But you should be able to run it at above 70 FPS on high preset with an RTX 4080, finally crossing that 60 FPS average for smoother experience. 
In contrast, Rainbow Six Siege is a fairly easy to run game. 4K, ultra settings, over 300 FPS is possible. 4K 240Hz monitors are now welcome more than ever. Expect close to 100 FPS in Borderlands 3 on Ultra preset. Assassin's Creed Valhalla tends to favor AMD graphics cards. Even so, RTX 4080 should allow you to pillage England in 4K ultra high quality at 85 FPS average. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is a perfect example of how you should be able to play AAA games from the past couple of years on the highest quality preset at above 100 FPS in 4K. That includes Horizon Zero Dawn at 132 FPS average. And strange, but good looking Death Stranding at 174 FPS. Watch Dogs Legion is yet another AAA game that even the flagship graphics cards struggle to run using the Ultra preset at 4K. But with RTX 4080 it should not be a problem with over 90 FPS average. Now on to the 1440p resolution. I think that RTX 4080 will be a great option for someone who likes playing even the AAA games at very high FPS. Cyberpunk 2077 should be running at close to 140 FPS on high preset. You should be able to reach over 500 FPS in Rainbow Six Siege if your CPU and monitor can handle it. Borderlands 3, 1440p, ultra preset, close to 170 FPS average. Even in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, you should be able to squeeze out over 120 FPS on ultra high quality. Watch Dogs Legion should be silky smooth at 144 FPS. Theoretically, RTX 4080 should allow over 260 FPS in Death Stranding. However, I do not know if it will be possible due to CPU and game engine constraints. It applies to the following games as well. Horizon Zero Dawn should be able to break past 200 FPS. And Shadow of the Tomb Raider over 250 FPS on the highest quality preset. Did you enjoy this video? Then click like and subscribe for more. It was I, Vadim. Until next time.